Good evening. Okay, just for a short meditation before we start cleaning this building and worship the Lord even by working for Him. Let us turn a Bible to the book of Acts. I'll just encourage you a little bit and, and then we will proceed in the next work that we have in cleaning the room as we prepare for tomorrow's church service. And I pray that the Lord will prepare your heart to worship the Lord and sing praises to Him tomorrow. And also, may the Lord speak to us through the preaching of God's Word tomorrow. Okay, now turn your Bible to the book of Acts chapter 15. In the book of Acts chapter 15, uh, just one verse I would like to take and uh, speak maybe for 10-15 minutes. And uh, in the book of Acts chapter 15, we read in verse number 26. In verse number 26, when we read, we find a very, uh, what to say, kind of a, it is describing, uh, it is describing a, a Christian, or it's speaking about few Christian men, what they did for the cause of Christ. Okay? Now, this is not what all the Christians are doing. These are very few Christians who are doing for the sake of Jesus Christ. Of course, not all Christians can do it. Actually, it's not that cannot do. Uh, but you know what? This is speaking about some people who are chosen and uh, what they are doing is they are totally sacrificing their life for the cause of Christ. Okay? And so we are, and we come to book of Acts chapter 15. As we see over, over here, we find in verse number 26, it says, Men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. If we want to just title this sermon, uh, short sermon, we can say, Hazarded life for the Lord. Hazarded life for the Lord. What is hazarded means? What is hazarded means? Hazarded life for the Lord means, you know, like, we, uh, you know, when you read, you know, if you see in the, uh, in the smoking, you know, in the cigarette box, what it says, smoking is injurious to health. And then some of the thing is now hazardous to health, H-A-Z-A. Uh, R D O U S hazardous means dangerous or it's something that will destroy your health. Something that will destroy your health. Hazarded means destroying of it is uh, related to our health, okay, our physical body. And so what we are fi finding over here is these people, a few men, they've hazarded their life for the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, what is what is what does that speak about? This speaks about these people are so much in love for the Lord, and they are not concerned about what the world says about them. They are not concerned about anything. All that they are concerned about is God is serving the Lord Jesus Christ, and so what they are doing is the word hazarded is very. Uh, is it's a word that describes. Their radical conviction for the service of the Lord. It's speaking, uh, you know, speaking about the apostles and the disciples of Jesus Christ. They were not worried about anything. They were not concerned about anything, about their personal looks and their personal life and their personal luxuries and their personal whatever. They were willing to give up all their pleasures for the sake of Jesus Christ. Hazarded life, they hazarded their life. It mean they did not go to enjoy themselves as you know most of the Christians would enjoy. For them, first was Jesus Christ. In everything, in everything, when you say hazarded mean they were willing to suffer hungry in order to bring glory to God. They were willing to suffer any kind of loss in their life for the sake of Jesus Christ. They were willing to go through any kind of persecution for the sake of the Lord Jesus Christ. They were willing to be mocked. They were willing to be insulted. They were willing to be laughed at. They were willing to be beaten. They were willing to be tortured. They were willing to forsake any kind of pleasures and entertainment 
they were willing to give up anything for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. These people were something. They never thought about their personal things. All that they were thinking was Jesus. How can I serve him? How can I please him? How can I do this for the Lord Jesus Christ? How can I bring glory to him? They had no thoughts about themselves. You know, when we read about Paul's life, Paul speaks about the dangers that he faced, the persecution that he faced, the sickness that he had, and all the losses that he counted like a dung. Paul speaks about all these things. Paul's life is a hazarded life. Willing to allow this body to suffer for the glory of God. And so what we read over here it speaks about men. You know, if you read in verse 24, For as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your soul, saying, He must be circumcised. Now, that is, did Jesus say that? What did Jesus say? He must be born again. Amen. He never brought laws in salvation. Jesus never mixed work in salvation. Salvation is pure grace. Amen. Pure grace. And so what happened was there were a few people who went and crept into some Bible believing churches in, in, during the, in the early church age. And what they were doing was they were subverting or they were hurting people or destroying their conviction or putting doubts in people's mind. Putting doubts in people's mind. You know, when cults come and all, they, what they will do is they will put doubts. Okay? They will put doubts in your mind. So, oh, you yeah, like that? Okay? Subverting, trying to make you doubt what you believe in the scripture. For as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you. So these people were ones who were with the apostles. Maybe we can say disciples. But what they went, what they went away, they went and, uh, and uh, saying that they are doing ministry, they went into churches and they started poisoning people's mind or they started preaching false gospel or destroying people's faith in the scripture. That is what we find today. That's what we find people destroying people's faith in the book. You ask anybody, what is your final authority? They say, oh, my final authority is Bible. But the problem is, which Bible is your final authority, right? Because there are 300 versions. Not all 300 versions can be final authority, because all 300 versions speaks about something else. Nobody agrees, not all three versions agree with anything together. And so they were putting doubts in people. Today what we find is people, uh, Bible scholars, so-called Bible scholars, subverting people by putting doubts, subverting their souls by putting doubts in the scripture. And so today people don't want to believe in the Bible. When God has given us is a pure, preserved, inspired word for the English-speaking people in the King James Bible, but the so-called Bible scholars, they want to destroy people's faith. And so they will subvert your soul. And then we have cults all over, subverting your soul by putting doubts about God's word and doctrines. Okay, and so uh, we, uh, for as much as we have heard that certain which went from us, uh, have troubled you with words, subverting your soul, souls, saying he must be circumcised, and keep the law to whom we have no such commandment. So what they were teaching, you must keep law, like we have Seventh-day Adventists. They teach salvation by grace plus work. The Roman Catholic Church, salvation plus uh, grace plus work. Mostly they major on works. Then we have the Jehovah's Witness, salvation by work. Mormons, salvation by work. You talk to them, do you believe in grace? Yes, we believe in grace. And then you talk to them more about the doctrine, then you find, oh, there's no salvation by grace. Every call. If you are not baptized, you are not going to heaven. You are not saved. That's what they teach. Oh, you need to keep all these things. Salvation is pure grace. By faith. Okay? But what these people were doing is, they were, they, they were subverting people's heart and people's soul. They were troubling people with words. Great things. 
You know, they, they speak so nicely, they make people, ah, oh, this fellow speaks so sweet. Maybe he has some wonderful spirit. But that guy is a false prophet. Hmm? It seemed good unto us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul. <coughs> so, speaking about Paul and Barnabas, Paul and Barnabas had good testimony. Okay, book of Acts is written by Luke the physician. And so he's writing about Paul and Barnabas over here and they had good testimonies. He said, it seemed unto us being assembled with one accord to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul. Barnabas and Paul were, one, were the ones who hazarded their lives and the other chosen men from the church. We lack such Christians today in our churches everywhere all over the world, okay? Hazarded means he is willing to give up on any matter to give first priority to Jesus Christ. No matter what it comes, anything comes between you and God, you are willing to forsake those things to give first priority to God. That is speaking about hazarding your life. You are not afraid of anything, you are not ashamed of anything, you are not compromising but you want to stand for the Lord and give him first priority if we have Christians in churches like these like Paul and Barnabas we can do great things for the Lord in this land of Goa and in India okay and so he says uh, speaking about Barnabas and Paul and the other chosen men what men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ these are the men. They had a good testimony. They hazarded their life for the sake of the Lord. That is what speaking about what that's what Jesus said. If you wish to be my disciple, take up your cross. Take up your cross. Taking up your cross is hazarding your life. Saying no to your personal preferences, saying no to your personal pleasures, entertainments, whatever. And saying yes to Jesus Christ, giving Him first priority in every areas of your life. Now that is called hazarding your life for the Lord. Paul and Barnabas had a good testimony. If we have Paul and Barnabas in our churches, we will be able to do great things for the Lord. Amen? Amen. Let us strive together to be like Paul and Barnabas. No matter what comes in our spiritual growth, what comes as a hindrance, discouragement, disappointment, let us be like Paul and Barnabas, hazarding our life for the sake of Christ. Okay? Just live for Him, love Him, and tell people about Jesus Christ. We have to be a witness. Paul and Barnabas, why they were sent? They were sent so that they can protect the ch church members in that church who have been taught false doctrine by those who went away from these apostles, subverting the souls. We got to be Christians, strengthening other Christians, teaching Christians to be strong in doctrine, encouraging them, supporting one another, and telling the world, the unbelievers, that Jesus died for them, that He shed His precious blood, He died, was buried, and rose again, and if they would put their faith in Jesus Christ, they can be saved. And so, we have to set aside our life to bring glory and honor to God, to win people to the Lord, and to build our brothers and sisters in our church to be strong in faith, to be strong in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Shall we pray?